What's up, everyone? Uh, Christo here with another podcast, The Fragcast. Uh, today, I'm going to be talking about gourmand fragrances, and joining me again is Eugene. Uh, so say hi to everyone, Eugene. Hey, YouTube. What's going on? Eugene here. Happy to be back. Christo, how's it going? All right. Um, let's do a quick send to the day. I just want to throw this in quickly. Just give the uh, the listeners a feel of you know what we're wearing, what kind of is surrounding us, and everything. What do you got on right now? Today I had on Guerlain Santal Royale. Uh, mm-hmm. First time I've ever put it on. I was absolutely um, horrified. It just didn't work for me. But um, after finishing my sample, I absolutely fell in love with it. It's a um, sandalwood oud. Um, a little bit of rose, leather, woods, very creamy, gets somewhat Mm -hmm. powdery, just a beautiful fragrance um, that gets a lot of negative feedback. If if you can get past that, try it out. And uh, just a great fragrance from Guerlain. Really happy to have it. Well, and you know what? That's actually what I'm wearing as well. No way. Yeah, not coordinated. Wow. Um, I was actually supposed to go to a concert and meet a uh, a friend of mine from Toronto, but by the time I left the house, it was like cold and raining and snowing and stuff. And I was like, no way I'm not going anywhere. So how's it working for you? I love it. I really like it. In fact, I believe I like this one before you did not to brag. You, you actually did. And I was telling you how crappy it was. I remember. <laughs> and, uh, and I kind of went enough. Mm-hmm. I had to go out and purchase a bottle and, uh, yeah. I'm so glad I did. Yeah, it's really great. I like it a lot. I find it very dark, um, very dry, woody. I like that a lot. I think it's a great scent. It is. It's very beautiful, very complex. It's always changing, and every time I wear it, it's uh, constantly. I get. I'm getting different results. So I really like that. Like you never know what you're ex- what to expect. Yeah, and that's great. That's something you know you want from a fragrance. It's going to keep you know keep your interest. Keep wearing it. Uh, yeah, of course. Okay, so we're going to talk about gourmands today. So um, most people listening will probably know what a gourmand is, but um, how would you define it yourself? Just give like a really simple definition of what you would consider a gourmand. To me, a gourmand would be um, something that smells edible. Like, So when you smell it, if it smells like something you'd eat, that's what I'd call a gourmand. Something very sweet, sugary you know, probably notes of chocolate or vanilla. Okay. Yeah, definitely. That's what I would say. Um, something that smells both edible and sweet. Uh, you know, I wouldn't particularly call more edible notes, you know, um, even like cinnamon, even though it is edible, I wouldn't necessarily consider a cinnamon based fragrance, uh, a gourmand. Maybe you've had other, uh, notes backing it up that were gourmandish, but yeah, so right. definitely something sweet and right, right. edible, not necessarily spicy and edible. Yeah, even though um, you're getting vanilla or chocolate, doesn't necessarily mean it's a gourmand. Like, mm-hmm. there's lots of fragrances with vanilla in it, and it, it doesn't smell like something I'd want to eat. So, it's yeah, not, you know, it's not something I get, I consider gourmand. I think a lot of people mix that up quite often, they confuse yes. soup. Um, definitely something that, uh, I wanted to mention in here, uh, you know, just talking about what is generally seen as a gourmand. And I think often the misconception between a gourmand and an oriental fragrance, uh, cause oriental notes are typically what we would classify as being gourmandish. So things like, uh, vanilla, cacao, um, benzoin. You know, Yeah, um, all of those kind of tonka, things like that, that we kind of associate with uh, uh, oriental fragrances. Right. So classically, um, the first gourmand, or what is considered to be the the first gourmand ever, is Thierry Mugler's Angel for Women. Now, I've been researching this, you know, for the last day or two, you know, trying to find if there's anything that is, you know, undisputably earlier than that, that is gourmandish. And I honestly can't say I can find any trace of it. Um, Perhaps there's things 
that were like very regional from the Middle East or whatever, where they're more into Oriental notes. Mm-hmm. But in terms of like worldwide major mainstream success, I think it's pretty much considered for sure the first gourmand fragrance. I think before Angel came, um, we were having, especially for women, uh, a lot of animalic uh, fragrances, you know, sheepras, leathers. Uh. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. You know, uh, Angel is from 1992, which sounds like forever ago, honestly. You know, when I think about when that came out, I was still in like junior high school. Um, right. And it's just, it's really not that long ago in the grand scheme of, you know, the perfume world, right? Oh, no. Considering, you know, the kind of revolution that went on in, you know, like the kind of 20s and 30s, uh, you know, with fragrance, especially women's, you know, it's really quite recent, uh, you know, considering that. And it's also kind of interesting that, you know, kind of when women's fragrance, you know, high end women's fragrance was booming in the 20s and 30s, or when it first started to at least, uh, you know, 40s as well, I guess. Um, it took that long, you know, 50, 60, almost 70 years to get into like, hey, let's make people or women smell like food, which is kind of interesting. So like you said, very uh, aldehydic, animalic fragrances were very uh, feminine until like, you know, the late 80s, right? Right. And men's fragrances, the kind of paradigm for men's fragrance um, was really similar, but, you know, without the aldehydes, uh, you know, you know, maybe put in some uh, patchouli or oriental notes in the opening, you know, uh, something like that. And that's basically what a men's fragrance was. And I find a lot of, you know, pre, pre-90s or maybe even pre-80s, uh, you know, men's and women's scents to actually have quite a lot of similarities. Right. Um, and a lot of them are very samey and very similar. And I think it was kind of the late 80s and the early 90s when just everything was broken and the rules were just shattered. And, you know, you started to get these outrageous fragrances like Angel and Fahrenheit and things like that, Le Mal, that just, you know, totally changed everything. Well, Angel was definitely a leader of its pack and, and, and you know, started a, a whole genre of, you know, new designers and, and even niche now are doing um, gourmands, right? Like after mm-hmm. Angel, we got Angel Men. We got yeah. Rochas Play Intense by... Uh, oh, I forgot about that one. Yes, definitely. Um, and that's a good question because we were actually talking about this before. What's the first men's gourmand? And... To the best of my research, I would say that it is probably Mugler's Amen. Um, the only thing I could find, you know, mainstream accessible that would predate it, that I would kind of stretch to say was a gourmand, was um, Yves Saint Laurent's Opium. And I think that might come to the kind of oriental confusion. I think Opium has really strong... Uh, you know, oriental edible notes, but overall I don't really see it as much of as as a gourmand as Amen. Right. I'm not very familiar with opium. I know it's very sweet. I've I've tried it a few times. Um, Mm. I I wouldn't classify it as a gourmand. Like, like you said, an uh, oriental, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I, like we said, it's confused often orientals and gourmands. Yeah. And it's just kind of as well, to me, we, I actually went and found, I just totally by coincidence, I didn't even realize, I actually have uh, a sample of Mugler's Angel in front of me right now, like an official carded sample. And I sprayed it just before we, um, you know, started talking. And to me, in 1992, if I was, you know, into perfume, and, you know, looking for a female fragrance, if I smelled this, my eyes probably would have popped out of my head. <laughs> and in fact, I have really early memories, you know, for me comparatively, of uh, my old roommate, uh, a British girl I used to live with and work with in Indonesia. And she brought this with her from England. So this is probably like 2004 or so. So, you know, well after it was released, maybe even 2003. 
And I remember her wearing it. And it's like, holy shit, that is so strong. I've never really smelled anything like that. Yeah, and now we've smelled so many things that kind of smell similar in, in a way. Yeah, it makes and you are think just like truly sweet and edible. I find this to have a lot of floral and a lot of kind of heady patchouli in it. Would you still consider Angel a gourmand? Knowing what I know today, no, I wouldn't really consider it overly gourmand. I'd say it's more of like a floral patchouli or maybe even a fruity floral. As much as I hate fruity florals so much, right. um, I actually do have a lot of respect for Angel. Uh, I have kind of connections with it, like other than my roommate who was just my roommate, my ex-girlfriend who I lived with for like three years lived, well, used to wear this. And it was her signature. So it's just like every time. So it haunts you. Angel haunts you. Exactly. So it's kind of like I remember her wearing it so distinctly. Um, So every time I smell it now, it just reminds me of her. So in a way, I've kind of avoided it somewhat just because it brings back a lot of bad memories. A lot of good ones, but a lot of, you know, the bad ones are what you think of more. Yeah. Well, my wife wears Angel quite often and something she does enjoy um, mm-hmm. and yeah, it's not, it doesn't really smell like something I'd eat, you know? No. Um, As, you know, the opening, uh, yeah, the opening definitely has kind of edible qualities to it. Kind of caramel, chocolate, vanilla and stuff. Yeah, it's got There's, some like a can cotton candy sort of vibe. Yeah. Uh, some patchouli um, and chocolate, maybe some, la- is it lavender? I'm not sure, but um the opening i get more florals honestly um it's kind of like florals and some kind of oriental notes in the dry down i get a lot of patchouli like very earthy maybe um dirty powdery cocoa yeah but yeah today compared to things that i can think of i wouldn't really call this a gourmand i'd call it more of a Uh, an oriental but you know same thing with amen uh i still remember the first time i tried amen i was like wow this is amazing and i still really love it i think the opening of amen is just you know off the charts for a mainstream designer fragrance yeah i don't mind it so much i don't very i don't wear it very often but i do have a bottle and when i do i actually do enjoy it And, and i do find the base um somewhat gourmandish with that it's got that heavy patch and chocolate chocolate note Mm -hmm. and i'm not a big fan of gourmands but the very few that i do own um i I either either don't reach for them very often or Mm -hmm. i don't know just not really my thing yeah i agree i i'm kind of with you on this one uh and again, you know, it just depends totally what you would consider a gourmand fragrance. So what are some notes? We've already mentioned a few here. Vanilla's come up quite a lot. Chocolate's uh, come up. What are some other notes you'd get? Yeah, we said candy, uh, chocolate, candy, honey. Honey can make something gourmandish. Yeah, honey's an interesting one because I think typically when we think of honey as a fragrance note, we think of it as, you know, sweet, sticky, but the, the honey that I love the most ends up giving like really like, you know, pissy animalic. Yeah. Color. I was just going to say, I love honey and civet. So it goes so well together. Yeah. Um, like a lot of the, the early, you know, pre nineties men's fragrances will have a lot of honey in it and it's very animalic smelling. Yeah. Um, very, very interesting. But yeah, I think kind of honey can present itself in, you know, two very, very different ways. It can be, yeah, very animalic and, you know, very urine-like smelling, um, you know. Which is not very gourmandish. No, 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 no. Absolute <laughs> pearless soir, like, oh, my God, that stuff is amazing. It smells like a dirty kitty litter box to me. Yeah, or a homeless dude. Yeah, uh, Mille de Bois from Serge Luton's, if you've ever smelled that. Oh, man, it smells like a, a tree stump that some a burning tree stump like an old decaying tree stump that was on fire and someone pissed on it to put the fire out. Oh, yummy. It's, it's crazy. Yeah. Um, well, honey's actually a good one that I think we both kind of enjoy, but mm-hmm. then there's those really sugary notes like um, cupcakes or yeah. actual sugar, you know, like uh, caramel, caramel. Yeah. Or, or Turkish delight. 
Yeah. See, I'm funny. Um, Turkish delight, I actually enjoy when that's kind of replicated. But yeah. caramel, this is funny because I remember this is with you. I believe the first time we went into the Niche Essence Boutique in Toronto, uh, Lira from Zerzhov, uh, what line is it? Um, the name escapes me. I'm going to look it up while we're talking here. Casamorati? Yes, that's it. Thank you. And uh, uh, the uh, the very knowledgeable, experienced uh, sales assistant, you know, kind of a middle-aged, rather chic, hip, cool woman who has, like, traveled the world meeting perfumers and, you know, exploring and adventuring through the world of perfume – we were going through like all these different fragrances and I was like, Oh, I've heard so many people say that Lyra is like the best gourmand fragrance ever made. And she actually got angry at me for wanting to try it. <laughs> like, no, this is for your teenage girlfriend. A man does not wear this she was, like, really angry. And I had to like beg her to try it. You know, like, I never would have wanna... remembered that unless you mentioned it, but I, yeah. I do kind of agree. Oh, I remember with it. Because it was on my uh, on my radar for so long. Because I'm I'm quite open minded. I generally don't like gourmand fragrances. Right. But when I hear something you know talked about so much over and over how it's the best gourmand. It's you know this amazing caramel fragrance. You know, it's like okay, I, it sounds interesting, and I'm quite into pastry gourmands. And um, she's like, "Why do you want to smell like cupcakes? Why do you want to smell like cupcakes?" And I was like, "I just want to try it. Sorry." Yeah. And she did let me try, and I was like, yeah, it literally just to smell like, you know, kind of liquid sugar. I was really let down by it. Yeah, That's kind I, of a common theme with, for me and Zerzhov, though. I've been too really much caramel impressed by that whole fragrance house. Well, kind of like Feb Delicious from uh, Christian Dior. I was I really disappointed. Tried that. I've heard so much from so many people that is like so polar and so different, and Man, I just, I really want to try it because I'm just so curious. So many people just are rabidly in love with it. And then, you know, a smaller minority, I believe, including yourself, are just like, this is, you know, just throwaway junk. You know, I, I had the opportunity to try it once. I had a, like a one mil sample. And based on the first 20 minutes, I was ready to purchase a bottle. It was like so super spicy cinnamon. And mm -hmm. right after that, I got like sickly sweet on my skin where it made my tum on my stomach turn. Like it was like tooth decayingly sweet. I couldn't stand oh, no. it. And uh, I was hoping it would just like not last, but it kept going on and on for hours and it, it wouldn't go away. So it, it's, yeah, that just didn't work for me. Another gourmand that will not make it into my collection. I really want to try that one. Um, a couple other notes I want to mention, uh, cherry and almond, um, and accompanying those often will be heliotrope, which is a floral. Um, and you know, like, kind of like you mentioned, Turkish delight, cherry, almond, and heliotrope are often combinations that go together. And beside Besides pastry gourmands, probably my favorite gourmand fragrances are Turkish Delight fragrances, which is also weird because aside from generally not liking gourmands, I generally dislike powdery fragrances. Um, but things like um, Rahat Lukum and uh, Traversy du Bosphore from uh, Lardasan, I just like are literally amongst my favorite kind of mainstream niche fragrances ever made like they're just out of this world to me i love them i'm not familiar with either of those and uh cherry and almond are, are, are again two notes that just don't work for me especially almond and that actually sounds like something that grillon does a lot of cherry almond and heliotrope right i i definitely can say i remember almond being you know added into a few Guerlains. Actually, I've got a sample here. I'm going to try to find it quietly. Well, is it Guerlain Coqueen or something? Uh, no, it is from the kind of quote-unquote designer line, the Le Petit Robe Noir. Mm -hmm. um, the okay. tea I actually heavily prefer. I think there's quite a few flankers now, but the EDT I actually quite like. It's kind of nice and transparent. The EDP gets really syrupy and sweet, and I 
don't like it, but um, the EDT, I, I enjoy that quite a lot. I bought a bottle for my wife uh, a couple years ago before we went on holiday. Okay. I I've snuck a few uh, sprays for myself here and there. Yeah. So it's just another mass appealing fragrance, really. Mm -hmm. And, you know, designed for the masses. Yeah. Um, and that's, you know, the next point I wanted to bring up was kind of the general appeal of uh, gourmand fragrances. So, like, you know, why are gourmand fragrances so highly regarded? And why is it that there's, you know, it's one of the few genres where you both get men and women going nuts over the same fragrances because that doesn't really happen that much. You know? I think it's just because they're so easy to like and people just generally like sweet fragrances. Um. But, okay, and, you know, again, this is why – you know, we talk a lot and we do a lot of work together and why we meet up and hang out and, you know, talk fragrance so much. Neither of us really like it. So why would you think that perhaps, you know, we're kind of so against gourmands generally, but on the other hand, they can be so likable? I, I, I'm not really sure. I can't explain why people like gourmands. I know to me, they're my least favorite genre and, it's just, I'm looking for something more. I really have no explanation why I don't like sweetness. Um, in my general life, I don't like sweet food. I don't take sugar in my coffee. I don't eat cake. I don't eat donuts. I don't eat a lot of chocolate. Mm -hmm. um, it's funny you say that because I would say the exact same thing as well. Um, generally, I do not, I actually avoid sugar. Um, not just because it gives you really bad breath, but also just because I don't like the taste of it. In like for me, dessert is having a second hamburger kind of thing. If you know <laughs> what I mean, right? So that's it's just like I an don't, extra side of fries. Exactly. Yeah, I just I just don't like uh, sweet food. You know, I, I I will admit now and again I'll have something, but it's like in a week I might have dessert once. I might snack on like, you know, if my son has like little chocolate covered almonds, I might sneak one or two and that's like it. But I yeah. just I don't crave the stuff to me. Um, I, I hate fruity florals and I've mentioned them so many times, you know, on my channel, I just can't stand fruity florals. But uh, I think in general, people usually like like chocolate or, um, mm -hmm you know, cake or donuts or very sweet, like sweet soda pop, right? It's, it's, that, that's what people look for, you know? People relax and they sit down on the couch and they have something sweet. And they probably just translate into perfume the same way. What do you want to wear? I want to wear, you know, something sweet. Yeah, yeah. Something that reminds me of comfort. Sure, okay, that's, I never thought of that. That's actually a really good point. Yeah, I never really um, thought of it that way. Because, yeah, to me, that's just, you know, not necessarily a comforting smell or a comforting, you know, taste or idea. Um, so, yeah, sure, that, that totally, totally makes sense. I, I completely agree with that. Um, to me, it's just like, you know, something, yeah, that just everyone likes, you know. Uh, for example... Uh, you know, some classic gourmands, like, you know, amongst the online community, uh, a couple fragrances, name some more if you can think of some, but I was thinking of New Harlem, uh, Ambre Nargui, Narguilé, however you want to say it. Right. Serge de Pau, Serge Luton, Jeu de Pau. Jeu de Pau. Uh, That's another one that I own. Rochas, man. Um, I hear Arabi, Serge Luton's Arabi is considered a, a gourmand. I don't really see it as a gourmand. No, to me, that is like total oriental. Um, and it's just a, a classic case of there's a lot of edible notes in it. You know, right. the kind sweet, of fruity notes, but sweet, bit. boozy, fruity notes. But yeah, it, to me, it's not a gourmand in any way, shape or form. Yeah, I would agree. Um, I actually don't like Araby, I have to admit. Um, I actually find it overly sweet for my taste as well. Yeah, it's this the kind of 
dry, sweet fruitiness it just drives me crazy. I bought a bottle blindly. I was like, oh, this is too much. Uh, someone I know described it as smelling like a fruitcake. I was like, oh, God, it does. It really nah, I can see that. Um, what's your take on, like, I've heard people consider back to black and tobacco vanilla as gourmands. What, what would you say about that? Back to black a little bit more, but... Um, Just because it's more heavy on the honey? Yeah, maybe. This kind of sweet, you know, edible, you know, syrupy honey. But um, tobacco vanilla, absolutely 100% no. No, I think it's too smoky to be considered a gourmand. I would agree. Yeah, I wouldn't consider that at all. Uh, even back to black, um, maybe. But if you ask me, I would say it's more of a... Uh, an oriental rather yeah. than. and i've heard also people say dior home intense and, and musk ravageur and even shalomar's gourmands which Dude, i, I, I wouldn't know. agree with at all musk ravageur definitely not dior home intense definitely not okay shalomar's here's one more how about hypnotic poison what's that hypnotic poison you know what? i actually was just trying the uh the poison line at the bay like one of the canadian department stores the other day and there's a few of the poisons that I just really, really love. Mm -hmm. I went through, I think, three or four of them. And I don't remember Hypnotic, but the original poison really stood out to me. And I think it does have gourmandish qualities as well. Yeah. Um, I, my wife's got a bottle of the Hypnotic. It, it comes in the red bottle. And it's got notes of like vanilla and almond. And it's almost like a, a semi-gourmand. I can see that. Okay. All right. I wasn't quite sure, you know, cause I kind of more remember them by the color rather than, uh, you know, the name. So when right. you the red one, boom, I know what you mean. Um, whatever the white one is, that's the one that I remember liking a lot before. Uh, which one's, uh, I'm going to, I don't even one. remember the white one. I think one of them's discontinued. Now there's a blue one. There's a purple one. Purple. Where's the way? Oh, pure poison. Yeah, no, I don't even remember. Um, just looking at that right here. Oh, that's white floral. So that kind of makes sense because I love white florals. How about something like Byredo's Pulp? Um, you know, I have really limited experience with that. Uh, that was one of the things that kind of in my medium niche days, kind of after I got in and I was kind of finished with my obsession with like, bond and killian and like really entry level you know stuff like that and mm -hmm. you know tom ford and oh tom ford I, you know i still had a bit of interest later but one of the kind of more more obscure not i can't say it's obscure at all but you know more obscure uh was yeah my first interest with uh byredo was pulp and i didn't even really think of it as a gourmandish fragrance i was looking at it more like uh you know, just, just a super, whole super lot of fruit, fresh. right? Yeah, and I was just like, wow, that sounds so interesting. And you did give me a little vial of it uh, mm -hmm. a couple, maybe four or five months ago. Um, and I remember smelling it and just going, wow, this is like <laughs> really full on. Like it smells like decaying fruit. Yeah, I get a lot of fruit in it too. And I've heard people consider it gourmand, but it's just something I, I don't see or like – I've never said, man, I want to eat this while wearing it, right? Yeah, um, I can't really speak too, you know, professionally on it. But from my limited experience, no, it didn't seem uh, very gourmandish to me. Yeah. Which kind of, br kind of brings up a whole other topic. Um, you know, the whole kind of drinkable uh, fragrance, you know, talking about, you know, boozy notes and tea notes. Uh, like when I smell like Gucci Porom 2, I okay. want to drink it, man. I just want to spray it down my throat. Like, oh, this really? So, yeah, I love it. It smells like kind of sweetly spicy tea. Like, totally that's something. so bizarre. I've never felt like that ever. Oh, man, that's what I always – I don't know. Maybe because I lived in Asia for so long, and that reminds me just so much of like traditional herbal teas and stuff. Wow. So um, interesting. I'm not a big tea guy. I love coffee and coffee is one note. I'd love to find a, a good fragrance, but it's, I've never been able to find that, that unicorn. Oh, 
man, I'm always I, looking, but I've been, I think it's a really exactly. hard note to capture in, in, in perfume. Yeah. I, I've been in that category for, you know, as long as I've been in perfume. I, I actually don't particularly like uh, drinking coffee. Um, I will very, very occasionally, like once every couple months kind of thing, but it's mm-hmm. more just to stay awake. Or if I'm in the company of people that don't drink alcohol and we're at a, you know, a gallon boutique. But, um, but yeah, to me, uh, I've been looking and looking and looking and I cannot find the perfect coffee fragrance. Like it's still elusive. Um, I actually pulled this up. I, I wanted to mention this. Um, there's this ultra elusive Comme de Garçon series, series seven, the sweet series. Um, it's one of the newer series series. Uh-huh. but it's been discontinued for a very long time. And they actually have one called Wood Coffee that sounds amazing. And then they've got Sticky Cake, Spicy oh. Cacao, Nomad Tea, and Burnt Sugar. Wow. And these are things like, they just don't even come up for sale on eBay. That's how rare they are. I remember seeing one of them come up a couple years ago and they were going for like 500 us dollars. Oh man. Insane. Like I've never even seen one for sale. I've never seen a bottle in my life. I've been into Comme de Garçon like die hard for like five years now. And I've literally never seen a bottle. Right. Um, and I own like the, in, like the entire synthetic series, which is like discontinued now as well. And like super rare. I own the entire line, but I've never even seen number seven sweet, like a single bottle. I'm sure it's only a matter of time till they find their way to you. You know what? I think the opposite. I think the longer and longer it goes, just the harder and harder it's going to be. Um, I would love to try them, but they're just so elusive and just, you know, if you can find them, they're just so rare and they've been out of production for so long. Yeah, but, they're so rare. I've never even heard of them. I'm not familiar with them at all. They're, that's it. You know, they've just been out of production for so long. You know, most people, even people that loved Comme de Garçon, just don't even really know about them or know much about them at all. Mm-hmm. So, um, what would you say, you know, we both openly said that we're not particularly big fans of, uh, gourmands, but what would you say, what would you consider to be gourmands that you do like, or things that maybe could lean gourmandish? Um, like I said, the only two that I have are Jeux de Po and, and New Harlem, and I hardly reach for either of them. Uh, mm-hmm. And it just go, boils down to not liking sweet fragrances. Uh, the closest thing, you know what? I, I just, just pick up um, Habit Rouge dress code recently. Mm-hmm. And it does have a lot of gourmandish qualities. But okay. again, it doesn't smell like something that I'd want to eat. It's got yeah. notes of praline, vanilla, chocolate, uh, anise, uh, you know, and it, mm-hmm. very sweet. It's like really sweet. But again, I've never said, man, this smells so good. I want to eat it, but it is something I do enjoy sure, as sure. sweet as it is. Cause it's got like heavy leather notes to balance it and, and pull it away from entering that gourmand territory. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, to me, like I've mentioned, you know, already today and, uh, numerous times in my channel, um, I'm not overly into gourmands, but Definitely the pastry gourmand appeals to me the most. Jeu de Paul, I love it. I love it so much. But actually, once I got a bottle of Santal Majuscule, also from Serge Luton's, mm-hmm. it's kind of made Jeu de Paul redundant. Um, I think it does kind of what Jeu de Paul does, but just takes it to a whole nother level. It's thicker. It's denser. It's got a really beautiful rose note in it as well. Um, I don't think I've even worn Je de Po since I got Santal Majuscule. I've just been so in love with that. I, I can see some similarities, but I wouldn't say um, 
Santal Majuscules like comes even close to being a gourmand. No, and it doesn't. And that's why it's kind of interesting because I would totally consider Je de Po a gourmand, but um, Santal Majuscule, which I find to be somewhat related, um, I just, I love it so much more. And, you know, I just can't stop wearing it. Um, I love New York for her. Uh, the pink bond number nine uh, with the I love New York label on it, of course. Uh, I like that. You know, it is kind of girly. It is kind of femme. It's pretty mainstream. But um, I, I think it smells good. And I think it smells good on my wife. I like it when she wears that. She really enjoys it as well. Uh, another one I really like from the pastry gourmand uh, is bittersweet from uh, Tokyo Milk, and I just talked about this quite recently. Um, that to me is like one of the most authentic gourmands, you know, in terms of just pure edibility. It basically just smells like chocolate cake, right? And it's like you know, it is cheap, and it's kind of like an easy. Uh, gourmand, which is, you know, kind of like we mentioned, that's what the appeal is, you know, in my opinion to gourmands. It's cheap and easy and it's simple to do. Um, it's a cheap thrill to me. Um, and, you know, in, you know, financial sense as well, it's less than a dollar a mil. Um, I really enjoy it. I think it's just a fun, quirky kind of, you know, yeah, it's, Again, it's... It, it's not something I'm overly familiar with. And it's probably because every time I hit the boutique, like these gourmands are the last genre that I search for. Yeah. Um, and as well for me, even if something has a reputation for being a gourmand now, I'll actually intentionally avoid it. Just like, you know what? I'm not going to like it. So I'm not even going to try and I know that's bad because I'm definitely the kind of person that would say, you know, if you ignore something that you might not like, if you ignore women's fragrances, you're going to miss out on some things. Right. You never know what you're missing out on. Yeah, I'm totally like that. But again, yeah, I'm. So it's almost like we're being ignorant on purpose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like gourmand is like the freckled redhead or, um, <laughs> you know, um, yeah, that's just. I don't know. That's just the way I feel about gourmands. Um, now, what do you think about uh, the Garillon gourmands? Um, you know, especially Spiritus Double Vigny and Tonka Imperial. See, I, I find them way overly sweet. Um, but again, they don't smell like something that I want to eat. Even the, the vanilla, like it is sweet. Mm -hmm. but it's got other things to bring it away from gourmand like uh mm -hmm. you know there's the incense and musks in there and uh you know i as sweet as they are i've never thought i want to eat this okay how right, about you right. do you find them gourmands uh, i'm more familiar with sdv than tonka okay um and honestly, I, do, I don't like either. They're just way too sweet for me. And yeah, I kind of see them. I don't even see them as, you know, gourmandish or even foodie. It's just to me, it's just like pure sweetness. Yeah. Um, Are they classified as gourmands? I don't even know. Um, I doubt it. I, I would almost be willing to bet they're classified as, uh, gourma as uh, orientals. Orientals, yeah. That's what I would guess. Now, one thing I want to mention while we're talking about Guerlain and uh, Gourmands is one of the lesser known, and I believe now discontinued, uh, the Les Voyages Exclusives, uh, Paris to Moscow. Uh, basically, it smells like black forest cake. <laughs> uh, it smells like kind of a transparent chocolate and cherry cake basically um i remember years ago when i first kind of got into the indonesia jakarta fragrance community we met up and one of these guys who was you know quite privileged and you know jet set it around the world and you know he had been to you know boutiques in paris and milan and stuff and he had some of these samples from the Guerlain exclusives and I tried this 
And I was just like, wow, this is unbelievable. Like really? I couldn't imagine they could make a fragrance that smelled like, you know, black forest cake so perfectly. So if you kind of take bittersweet as my reference to like a chocolate cake, mm -hmm. imagine the um, Moscow Les Voyages and take that just to like, you yeah, know, with the girl on quality. Level. Yeah, exactly. It's you probably get a whiff of uh, birthday candles too or something. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. There's actually a couple from that line that I think are really, really solid, but, um, you know, they're, they're discontinued quite hard to find now. Um, and you know, for the price point, you know, there's a few things from the house I'd rather take over them anyway. Right. And even if they weren't discontinued, we'd probably be too ignorant to <laughs> give them a good whiff. What is, I think the London one, um, if I'm not mistaken, the one with the really great tea note, um, I, I don't know. I have a real soft spot for tea, but, um, yeah, I think that's it. I think it's London. I'm going to look it up quickly while we're talking here. But um, yeah, I think it was the London. I tried it in uh, Singapore at the Guerlain Boutique, like the first place I ever got to try the, um, the Guerlain exclusives. I was like, wow, this is so good. Yeah, that's it. It's London. Um, it's got, you know, a very predominant tea note. It's really nice. And it's listed as a floral fruity gourmand. Well, like there you everything go. Your I favorite. hate fragrance. Yeah, not something I'm I'm familiar with at all. I think they do actually have it in Toronto, but they took it off the shelves because it's out of production. But um, that's a whole other story. Yeah. So, anything else you want to put in for gourmands? Yeah, does you know as as far as I know, I don't really test or sample a lot of gourmands, and um, I'd rather keep it that way. Do you think um, that's to your detriment, though? Like, do you think that's kind of limiting yourself? I, I know it's being a little bit ignorant, but mm -hmm. I, I I just can't imagine liking any of them. So yeah, you know, I I just have a set mentality, and uh, yeah, I know what notes and genres I do like, and and that's really what. I look for when I, when I go to a boutique and I sample and smell and yeah, you know, when we're out, neither of us will look for a gourmand. We will actually yeah. kind of snicker if somebody wants to present <laughs> like something sweet and foodie. Yeah. And I think my mentality is, you know, if I do choose to pass up sniffing a gourmand it's just like with my taste, with being into heavier, darker, woodier, um, you know, perhaps even more animalic fragrances. It's like, even if I find a gourmand that I kind of like, it's not like it's going to jump into my must haves, you know, right. um, just what I would put in like my 10 or 20 all time favorites and adding to like my 10 or 20 fragrances I have to buy um I would say none of them like I would easily say none of them are gourmands or even yeah. relatively close to a gourmand or even sweet for that uh, I, I I feel the same way yeah Completely. so it's like even if I do try a gourmand and I like it it's just gonna be like oh yeah that's all right but uh I've got you know a hundred other things that I would rather buy tough to make the cut yeah, if for me, yeah, I'm just really discerning. I don't, I just don't see the, the appeal, the artistry. I think it is like, you know, like I said, the, the lowest common denominator of fragrances. And I, and I kind of find them juvenile too, just with the whole. I series. agree. Well, yeah. Can you imagine your dad wearing something like that? Could you imagine your dad wearing Feb de la Chuse? No, absolutely not. Or, or like. Barack Obama, you know, yeah. somebody in power. well, you know, even my mom, like I, my mom wouldn't wear something, <laughs> like that, you know, I just, yeah, just like, you know, imagining like an older, you know, respectable, older, you know, wealthy or wealth, uh, powerful man or, you know, woman for that. I just can't see them you know, wearing that kind of fragrance. I just can't, you know, like when you picture like, you know, like your ultra uber masculine macho man, you know, I do not picture them wearing something like that. And I'm not saying that's what I aspire to be. Right. It's just, you know, I don't see people over, you know, 
30 years old or 25 years old wearing that wanting to smell like coffee and chocolate cake yeah coffee i i don't know coffee's an interesting one how it gets you know lumped in as a gourmand but uh but yeah you know like just imagining you know barack obama or donald trump wearing <laughs> ambre nardi you know it's like there's no way they would you know what i mean <laughs> it's quite amusing <laughs> yeah exactly yeah yeah you know the leader of the free world wearing uh, you know a muffins <laughs> smells like muffins <laughs> <laughs> smelling, donald trump smelling like cupcakes <laughs> twizzlers and cupcakes <laughs> Oh man. Yeah, yeah, Vladimir Putin. Although he does have his own fragrance, doesn't he? I heard. Yes, I have yeah, no I don't idea know what enough about it so it could be, but let's not even get it. I'm sure it doesn't smell like cupcakes though. <laughs> cupcakes, yeah, no. Probably smells <laughs> okay. like blood. <laughs> yeah, the tears of the innocent. Blood and gunpowder. <laughs> Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to throw this over to our poll, okay? I'm going to throw this out to the listener. I want you to comment down below on your three favorite gourmands or maybe your three most unique um, or most daring or even your three worst gourmands. And the best few responses we get, the funniest or the most interesting uh, or whatever, we're going to mention them on the next podcast, okay? So uh, let us know down below your three gourmands, you know, best, worst, strangest, weirdest, boldest, uh, whatever you want. Um, you know, let us know, and we'll, uh, we'll mention them in the next podcast. So, uh, Eugene, thanks for coming on again. It's All always right. a pleasure. Thanks for having me, Chris. Yeah, and, uh, you know, we'll definitely, uh, you know, have you back on again soon. Uh, so take care and, um, you know, smell well. Okay, we'll see you. Okay, man. Take care. Bye.